Why, yes, I am wearing the same dress from my last video. No, I will never take it off. Hey, I'm Samantha Snow, and I sew a lot. A lot, a lot. Like, I sewed 80 plus garments in 2020 a lot. But when I first got into vintage, I did not sew at all. Like, I could not sew a straight stitch on a sewing machine. And so I got on YouTube to see if I could find any resources on how to build a vintage wardrobe on a budget. And there's quite a bit out there for the 40s and the 50s, but nothing really for the 30s. So I thought I'd fill that gap. The dresses in particular are very distinct to the 1930s. They're bias cut, they're design lines all over the place, buttons and bows and lace, and it just seems very difficult to reproduce that out of modern clothing. But what I found is it's actually quite easy to thrift separates. True vintage skirts from the 30s are rare and expensive, but 1970s and 80s skirts have a lot of similar shapes and are much easier to find. This skirt is from the 1970s and I bought it on Etsy for $26. The blouse I bought at Goodwill and the bow I made myself out of some nice thick ribbon. This outfit was heavily inspired by this picture of Clara Bow. Isn't she just adorable? This dress is actually from Walmart. Surprisingly, every so often, Walmart and Target actually have really good 1930s dupe dresses. One easy way to make a dress look 1930s is to add a collar underneath. You can find these lace collars on Etsy for under $20, and what I did was I just cut out two rectangles out of white cotton scraps I had lying around, and then I sewed two of the shorter edges together, and then hemmed all the other edges and added ties to the bottom and then sewed the collar on and cut out the neckline to fit the collar and then finished it off with bias tape. It is literally maybe an hour's worth of work and it's super cute in the end. The hat I bought off of Etsy, it is on the pricier side, but I do tend to wear this hat quite often so I didn't mind spending a little bit extra money. Resort wear and sailor motifs were very popular in the 1930s, and you can never go wrong with a striped knit top. Uh, they have been popular since Coco Chanel introduced them into the fashion world in 1917. I paired this one that I got from Target with a cute white pencil skirt and a scarf. Uh, the Oxfords are just from Amazon. I'll put a link to them down below. This outfit was heavily inspired by this picture of these four women. I'm actually really proud of how close I got to this front woman's outfit. I will admit, I spent quite a bit of money on these pants off of Etsy. I'll link the shop down below. But pants are hard and I don't like sewing them and I really wanted a pair of white wide leg trousers. They're a huge staple in my wardrobe. I love these pants. I got this halter top off of ThreadUp. I actually did a little bit to change it. I cut off the back and made little ties so that it could tie in the back. And I also cut it much shorter than it originally was. It also had a little keyhole in the front that I sewed up. The hat is from Amazon. You can find these floppy hats literally anywhere. And the espadrilles I found at Goodwill. Shorts ran the gamut of lengths in the 30s. If they are high-waisted, they work. Um, I don't often wear shorts because I hate my knees, but it's Texas and it's hot, and so sometimes they're necessary. Short sleeve sweaters like this are an adorable addition to a 30s wardrobe, and they are pretty easy to find. Uh, this one's from the 80s, but I also have a few from just a few years ago. Menswear for women definitely had its day in the 1930s. If you feel an outfit looks too plain, add a tie or a blazer or a vest, it works. 
I love these two outfits, and so I ended up combining them into one fantastic outfit. This is honestly just a modern long sweater. You can find them everywhere. And it just had a tie belt that I cut up, sewed a couple buttons on, and honestly, safety pin to the front. These pants were given to me by a friend of mine. They're from Victoria's Secret. I hoard high-waisted pants. I love them. I will never say no to high-waisted pants. Speaking of menswear, Marlena Dietrich. She was a style icon. I could gush about how every picture I find of her is better than the last. Finding a celebrity from the 30s is a great way to narrow down how you would like to dress. These pants I thrifted from ThreadUp. The sweater vest is a little boy's school uniform sweater vest. But hey, it's short like I wanted it. The bobby socks are from the little girls department, and this blouse is the same blouse from earlier that I got at Goodwill. And the loafers are from Target. 1930s hats or 1930s style hats are actually kind of hard to find, but honestly, I think you can never go wrong with a beret. I have berets in, gosh, at least six colors, maybe seven. I think what really makes a 1930s outfit is the accessories. I collect scarves, berets, belts. I mostly make a lot of my belts. It's a great way to use up scraps, and I just buy the belt buckles off of Etsy. You can find them pretty cheap in an array of colors. This scarf I actually made myself, but you don't have to. I just wanted a scarf that matched this skirt, and I happen to have this scrap of rayon lying around, so I hemmed it up. and ended up going out in that scarf that very day. When I go to thrift stores looking for clothes, I tend to do a general sweep just looking for fabrics that might work. So I'm looking for stripes, florals, usually small florals or sparse florals, or plaids. Then I look for the general shape if I can alter it to make it look something like the 1930s. This dress was originally a jumpsuit, but the pants were too short to make them into beach pajamas, so I decided to make it into this dress. What I ended up doing was I took the blouse and the pants apart, and I turned the blouse around so that the buttons were in the back. This pattern actually inspired me to do that, and then I just turned the pants into a skirt. It was actually quite easy, and then I just took the pockets off the blouse and put them down on the skirt. And there it is, a 1930s inspired dress. Evelyn Wood has quite a few videos about thrift flipping, so I'm going to link her channel down below. She is fabulous. If you are a sewist and you want a quick start to your 1930s wardrobe, I suggest a white blouse. Yes, I am mentioning this pattern again. And a simple 30s skirt. Um, I like using this snow white pattern. Mix it up with ties, scarves, bows. You can't go wrong. Well, that's all for me. Uh, what do you think? Should I do more vintage videos or should I just stick to the sewing? Uh, let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.